Gee. Oh. People waiting to the last minute to do everything. I'm here. Okay. What's up, everyone? I hope you guys are having a great, great day. Um, we are here about to get this real estate live QA Poppington. So before we get started, um, I want to make sure that y'all already know we're about to talk about um apartment buying. And you already know, I always make this request of you. Make sure you send this out to at least three people, people who you know, who really, really want to um, build wealth, <laughs> right? That's important. So send this out so that we can get all your questions answered. And while we wait, I do have some important announcements. Well, I don't want to say why we wait, because they're not going to be waiting. We're going to hop right into it. But uh, before we get started, I have some important announcements. Number one, what's up, Miss Kaya? What's up? How are you? Number one, we're about to make a huge, 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 huge change. And I am so excited. I've been working on this for months. And that is, we are now, our doors are now open. Before we had a wait list for people who wanted to join Better Than Success Real Estate League. But now our doors are now open because I have worked on this plan to help us scale so that we can help way more people than we've helped in the past. Um, we've gotten our systems down, proven to make sure that people invest in real estate. And I'm so excited. With that being said, because we're, we've we added so much value, we're actually going to double our price, but it's not going to happen until Monday. So as of right now, if you join right now, you can get in and be grandfathered in at the current rate, which is $97 a month. If you wait until Monday and my amazing announcements that I have after maybe like about two weeks, you're going to be in at $197 per month. So I need you to join right now. And a couple things I want to talk about, um, you know, in terms of joining. I had it all pulled up and then it went away. So that I can just like read it off to y'all and be super fluid with it. But... It's all good. So, all right, here we go. When you join, here are all the things that you're going to get access to. I usually go off the dome, but I didn't want to forget because this is really important. Like we're literally about to double our price and I don't want you to miss out on this. You're going to get access to up to five live real estate trainings per week. So just so you know, we have been around for five and a half years, right? So we've been doing this for a very long time. We've perfected our whole system for how we get people to invest in real estate fast. So we get, you get access to five live real estate trainings, over 500 recorded trainings in the back office, weekly real estate masterminds taught by quality real estate professionals, live real estate Q and A like this one, weekly deal hunting lunch hour to help you learn to find and analyze deals really quickly, community support through our 24 hour real estate group chat, access to our team of seasoned real estate executives to help guide you through your real estate journey, two highly curated real estate newsletters so that you can make informed buying decisions when you buy real estate, group coaching and accountability calls to keep you on track, a real estate book club to keep you just keep your head in the game, beginner's trainings to help you get acclimated, customized success paths to help you chart your own real estate journey that fits your busy schedule, plus much, much more. So I need you to sign up. My mom, my amazing mom just posted the link right here in the chat. And uh, so yes, sign up quickly before Monday. All right. I'm not going to kill y'all with a whole bunch of um, commercial. So we're going to get right into this. Our guest is running just a few minutes late, but it's all good. I just think this for a little while that I wanted to do to um, really help you guys just be more interactive with our live real estate Q&A. And one thing I want to do, y'all, is I want to have a little trivia that we're going to do. And whoever gets two questions right, whoever gets two questions right, they will win $25 for me. How about that? 
Y'all, y'all down to play? Say yes in the chat. Yes, thank you, DF. So much value. So much value. Go to that link and join and sign up ASAP. Otherwise, it's going to be too late. So let me know if y'all want to, um, while we wait for our guests, if y'all want some trivia questions. I'm going to make them up off the dome. I do this enough. D-Light said, yep. DS, DF said, yes. Um, Cam said, yes. Miss Kaya said, yes. All right, cool. All right, all right look, look. I'm going to give it like a few more seconds. <laughs> Sit, no, not two, $250, $25, okay? <laughs> do this real quick. Send, send this out to three people. And by the time you get done with your, your text message, sending this out, come back and I'm going to be ready for y'all for your questions. <laughs> y'all ready? I love a good competition. Intellectual competition. Put me on the racetrack <laughs> and my knees buckle. They <laughs> get weak. <laughs> Put me in a game show. Don't the rule is in my in my household, I am not allowed to play games like board games and stuff because I get way too serious. Even within BTS, it's the same thing. Two steps groups of people say the same exact thing. I get way too competitive when it comes to intellectual games. Whatever that is on my face. So um, all right, y'all back. All right. So Here's your first question. Your first real estate question is name three of the top line items that cost the most in a rehab. Three of the top line items that cost the most in a rehab. Now, obviously every rehab is different, but Let's just think about a normal rehab. The thing that you, these three things are the big things that you're going to be looking at. Like, like I know that's going to cost some bread and I'll take an array of answers, but I want you to give me three ones. So you got to get two of these questions right to win the $25. <laughs> All right. We got an answer. Okay. DF gave a really, really great answer in the chat. DF says, uh, HVAC electrical and plumbing. DF was the first person. Jean said, kitchen, bath, roof. I'm not mad at that. I'll take both of these answers. I really wasn't, I don't think a kitchen, bath, only because kitchen is so many different components and the same thing with bath. But um, I'm here for it because that's like where your money is most concentrated in the kitchen and the bath, right? Eric said, roof, kitchen, HVAC. Nicole said, roof, kitchen, HVAC. Same thing. Okay. Look at y'all having the same exact answer. <laughs> y'all in the same room? Terry, framing, new plumbing, new electric. All right. I'm taking all these answers. Okay. Roof, kitchen, HVAC. <laughs> y'all obsessed with the roof, kitchen, HVAC <laughs> combo. That's funny. Blink, blink said, roof, foundation, plumbing. I guess your foundation, if you have to, if you have some issues with it. Um, but honestly, a lot of times this is like not, if, if they do have a foundation issue, it could be really small. It's just, you just don't know. That's really what the big thing is. It could be really small. It could be a real big problem. Camille said, Jamili said foundation, roof, electric. I'll take all these answers. All right. So here is the next question. Um, the next question is going to be what name me two types of roof material. These questions are easy. The first of you guys who got all these answers, the first of you will get the $25. Y'all Googling it. <laughs> Y'all Googling it right now. <laughs> I know. I can't control it. Y'all Googling it. Mom, you didn't give me, I can't give your answer. All right. So first person said, the very first answer was Eric, who said shingles rubber. Eric, you got two of them. So you're the first person. <laughs> you Googled the fastest. <laughs> I'm here for it. So you get your $25. Let's see what every everyone else said. 
No, let's see. Let's show Eric. Shout out to Eric. Eric is the winner. Eric, um, what I need you to do is email customer service with your cash app. Customer service is cs at better than success.com and put Eric Blackson winner of the contest. I'm going to post the email address. All right. So let's see what some of the other answers are. Jean said aluminum and some, some. I don't know what some, some is. <laughs> well, first of all, let's give Eric a round of applause. <laughs> Eric was quick on the uptake. Uh, Nicole said shingles, tar. Eileen said rubber asphalt. DF said rubber white. Jamili said rubber asphalt. Granulated. That's only one DF. Oh, you gave it to. There you go. Rubber and then granulated. Rubber shingles, composite, wood shingles, metal roofing, all, all super Googleable. Um, but um, Eric, go ahead. There's my email address. Congrats, Eric. All right. Go ahead, Eric. Okay. So our guest isn't here yet. So we're just, I'm just going to do a, a, a Q and a with me. I have a lot of stuff going on. So let me tell y'all some of the stuff that I have going on so that, um, I want y'all to ask questions. I really do. Actually, it, it'll help me clear my head. Cause I got so much stuff going on. I don't, I don't even really know what I got going on. So I literally, um, over, I've been waiting on closing, like everything had like all, almost all my pro properties that I've been doing that I just recently acquired has like some weird little title issues, but everything finally got cleared up. And so, um, it was four closings that I had like juggling in the air for about a month. And I did three of four of them. First one was a refi. And then I bought three more properties. One is in West Oak Lane. One is in North Philly. Another is in North Philly. Actually, the, the two in North Philly are literally back, like on the, the same hundred block. The address number is just one off and they're right next to each other. Um, <laughs> Jamili said, I was typing so someone else could win. <laughs> we appreciate that. Um, so... They're back to back. Um, and I, the numbers have just been so tight. Y'all know I like to go into all my deals with $0 out of pocket, but the numbers have just been so tight. And I had to put a little bit of money out for each of these deals. One of them I had to put out um, 8000 that is for the one in West. No, that is for the one in North Philly. I bought it for 70 or 75. The ARV came back at 160. And it really only is it's actually turnkey, but I like to keep it nice and clean. Um, I don't want no issues. Don't call me about nothing. So we're going to upgrade some things that could potentially break. Um, and then, so it was probably like 30,000 in there with the biggest thing being the HVAC right now, HVACs are just so expensive. And then the next deal, I actually had to come out my pocket 18 grand for that. That one is a way cleaner property. Um, I put the numbers on, on Instagram, uh, 125 acquisition. It's only going to be about 20. I think my construction budget is like 30, but I'm really only going to put about like 20 in it, into it. And then it'll praise for two, I think it was like 201. And so um, then the last one, I actually only come out of pocket $3,000. It's a complete turnkey, newly rehabbed property. Um, <laughs> I'm really proud of myself on this one. And uh Somebody I know is selling to me for a really great price. That's why it's so important to maintain good relationships out here and also maintain, um, let everybody know that you're doing deals. Because people we have seen time and time again, people have, like sellers 
when it comes to real estate, it's a very emotion, a very emotional thing. A lot of times sellers will sell to you, even if they, if they like you, even if that means they're getting less money. So like someone sold this property to me right out the bat, as is it ARV at 160. I'm not telling you what I'm buying it at. It's very low. <laughs> it's, it's disgustingly low. Disgustingly low. Um, because the seller likes me and they know that I do real estate. And they're like, hey, I got this property. Send me the pictures. The pictures are gorgeous. <laughs> like, <laughs> this property is one of them shiny properties. And so um, only thing is um, I got to get the tenant out. Which, like, when you get a property that low, worst case scenario, you lose a couple months rent. But, like, and I keep saying that low. I'm, I'm buying it at 95. And it appraised for 160. 150. 150. So, um, it literally needs nothing. It don't even need a doorknob. So, um, the best thing you can do is just make sure as you are growing in this, just everybody knows you invest in real estate. Everybody needs to know. Everybody. Because you never know who's selling a deal. The person that's selling a deal, I just really didn't know that they were selling, selling a deal. Um, so ask your questions to me about, about these deals. The last one, yeah, yeah we got to close on that last one and then I'm, I'm done with my four. And then actually I've identified some other properties that I'm going to, as soon as we we done today, I am going to um, hang up and put uh, under kind. Con- well, I gotta, I gotta make some calls just to make sure I'm on the right track because it's really what I'm thinking is really a gold mine. I'll share about that later. Um, so let me know if y'all got any questions about that. Um, Kaya says starting out with turnkey better than the burn bur- method. That's a really good question. It's a valid question. It really all depends on you. What do I mean by that? If you know you don't have a, if you don't have the stomach to like, if you don't have the eye of the tiger, (laughs) if you don't have the stomach to get busy, just, no lie, just buy turnkeys. It's going to be way more money out of pocket, but the investment that if you manage it properly, the return can be great if you buy right, right? At some of these deals that's out here. Um, If you are for the smoke, like you are willing to get your hands dirty, and I don't mean literal dirty, but like me, I'm willing to get my hands dirty. I well, I, I I have been and dirty really varies on where you are in your career on every level. It really does vary. But like if you know you're willing for that smoke, like sometimes people complain about like contractors and tenants and all of that. And like sometimes, yes, tenant calls do drive me crazy, but I'm for the smoke. I'm here for it. So, um, if you know you're for the smoke, burring is absolutely the best way to invest. It really, truly is. That's how you keep the ball rolling. You can make so much money burring, right? Like what I'm doing now, like I have like pockets with like how I manage my money, but like I've been doing so much investing and so much rehab and like I've been like living off of a portion of my refi money. I don't touch anything else. Nothing else. And so like I Jay-Z has this line where he said, um the key to life is keep a bag com- coming, another night, another bag coming. Like just make sure you got the bag coming in. That's all. So you know you're good. Like <laughs> when you go to refi, oh snap, I'm not even thinking about that. I'm thinking about the next bag. So um that's my answer. You have to be honest with yourself. Some of y'all are for the smoke in your nine to five. It's hard to be for the smoke in your nine to five and then turn around and be for the smoke in your real estate thing. I'm not saying you can't do it, but sometimes we are limited resources, right? Like you can't do everything. So if your three choices are like, if you got a really, really busy job, a really demanding job and home life, and your three choices are invest in turnkeys, right? Your kids, the job, everybody gives you a headache every day. They stress you out 
And then at the end of the day, you're spent. So you can either invest in turnkeys before the smoke at your home, work, and real estate life. And you know you can't do that. You're already spent at the other jobs or investing nothing. Invest in turnkeys. Like those are your three options. Do the turnkeys. Don't not do nothing. Okay. Because when you do the turnkeys, your landlord, your tenant is literally buying your wealth. Like they're paying your wealth. They're paying into your wealth. As they're buying down your mortgage, your equity is just, your net worth is just raising, raising, raising. So like you spend a couple dollars here and you got somebody else paying into your net worth. Hello? Okay. Um, next question is DF said, again, ask me questions, guys. Please, I'm here. I'm here. Uh, next question is, what's my thoughts on virtual staging? Um, I I have thoughts on it. Virtual staging is amazing, but I think um, there's a cutoff number where it's, uh, it's more beneficial to you to get physical staging. So I think um, if you're selling a property, Anything less than like 250, maybe 300 virtual staging all day, every day. If you're over 300, it might be beneficial to do physical, actual staging. Um, because staging can be expensive, um, physical, actual physical staging, it can eat into your profits. So that's why like I have some cutoff, loose cutoff numbers. Like everybody's pro projects are going to be different. So it's going to vary, but you want to run numbers. Virtual staging is everything. I sold a property before, got into a bidding war with virtual staging. And when, when we're doing deal hunting and we're looking at these properties and we, it's like an ongoing joke when, because I can identify the virtual staging because I used to be a graphic designer and that's all virtual staging is, is graphic design work, right? And so- even the ones that are done horribly, when you look at those pictures with virtual staging, it really does open up your mind to the possibilities. And it makes the space look totally different. Now, here are the pitfalls of virtual staging as a buyer, not as a seller. <laughs> as a buyer, when you are looking at virtual, and then also as you're doing running comps, right? When you're looking at virtual staging, it's always good to know how to identify it because the way that it works is, the software will take a raw picture, like a, you take a picture of the empty space and then they have these drag and drop things that they can drop into it. When they can drag and drop them, they can also resize things. So if you have a small room, virtual staging can make the room look bigger by putting a big couch and sizing it down to make you think like your depth of perception or your perception of this room in relation to this couch can make it seem bigger. So as you're looking at comps and you and you look looking for virtual staging, you, you spot virtual staging. So let's say you're buying, you're think, considering buying a property and let's say this property is a thousand square feet. And then the next property over right next door, same layout, everything is got virtual staging, but they put, you know, a thousand square foot, they put a king size bed with a in two end tables and a chair and a dresser in the room. Like a thousand square foot home and it got like extra space. Thousand square foot home is not going to fit that for a three, one bedroom. So you may be looking at it like, oh, wow, these houses on this block are big. And you got to realize that this. This state virtual stager, they can size things down to make the room look bigger. OK, so keep that in mind. But if you if you're selling a property and you're under 300, consider virtual staging. But also, like, I love when I'm looking at comps and whoever, you know, did it, the, the, the developer or the agent, they'll put the virtual staging pictures in there and the blank pictures in there. Just it makes me feel good. Like this is done responsibly. Because you get to see what's really going on. Because there's nothing worse than seeing a virtual stage picture if you're a buyer and then going to the home to go and view it and it's nothing in there. And it's like, I thought I was going to walk into this. I really liked it because of the way that they did it. And then you find out like, mm. so put both pictures. That's my thoughts there. Okay. Anybody have any questions about that? All right. Next question. Um, 
Miss Kaya, would I partner with a member? That is a great question. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about partner. I don't know. It depends. I try, I do try to not, um, I don't want to say I don't, I try, I just don't solicit um, partnerships with myself and members, but I'm not opposed to it. I just don't because I always like to like run a nice clean business. I don't want y'all to think I'm here to get y'all into a bid. I'm not opposed to it. I don't know. Depends. What does it depend on is your question? <laughs> it depends on how we structure the partnership, how much work Nicole has to do, what kind of deal it is. Did you find a deal? Are you going to be visiting the project every day? Are you going to be running the numbers? How much work does Nicole have to do? How much money does Nicole have to bring to the table? Depends. Um, okay, next question, Eel. Um, yes, I am too. Wish I had those problems versus no property, no tenants. Right. So people be complaining. I'd be like, listen, I remember, even though it was 12 years ago, I remember what it felt like to sit in a cold office in a cubicle next to a smelly man because I worked in a trading desk. <laughs> We're next to a bunch of smelly men. No, they weren't smelly. Some of the times they were. They would go play basketball on lunch break. Okay. <laughs> and they come back. And you know how trading desks are. Like, you don't have no office. Like, y'all. And <laughs> It's like, bro, <laughs> you could have took a shower. Yeah, they used to be doing it sometimes at lunch because there was a, a, a gym. All right, our guest just got here. All right, I'm going to finish answering your question. <laughs> Jim Lee said, Nicola, eyeball virtual staging in two seconds. <laughs> Happens every deal hunting it does. <laughs> Dan be so confused. <laughs> he called everything virtual staging. All right, next question is, do you only use business credit for rehab or do you also use personal loans? Um, I don't use personal loans. I try not to use personal loans. Um, I I got years ago, I had one personal loan that the interest rate is so disrespectingly low that I, I, I actually, I was just thinking about like, I should just pay this off. Um, but I'll use a line of credit. Maybe that's your question. I don't know. Specify what your question means. Do you use business credit for rehab or do you use personal loans? I would use personal loans. Personal loans are, are a good alternative because um, it's not revolving debt. So when you have like, so they give you, let's say you get a personal loan for $50,000. When they give you the $50,000, you having all 50 of it isn't going to lower your credit score the way that if it's a revolving debt and you're maxed out at 50, like a credit card. So it can be the same bank, just different terms, and it'll affect your credit differently. So weird. So same bank. One of them give you a $50,000 credit card. One of them give you a $50,000 personal loan. One, and they also give you a personal loan. If you pull, if you use, if you max out that credit card, that will drastically drop your credit score versus if you leave the credit card at zero and take the $50,000 in personal loan. Same money, same bank. <laughs> I mean, your your um, monthly, uh, your debt service will probably be higher with that business loan, but it might be lower depending on the rate and depending on the amortization. But, you know, it's not going to be that big of a difference. All right. Um, oh, Rosie asked a, a good question. Rosie, this is a good question. Save this for next week. This question right here. At what point in your investing journey do you you felt you were ready to quit your nine to five? Um, I have a different journey than quitting the nine to five because I got fired and I was a um I had a, I was an entrepreneur for six years before I started investing in real estate. So I got fired back in 2010. And I never looked back. <laughs> All right, last question, and then we're gonna bring our guest in here. Who is your favorite loan officer? <laughs> My favorite loan officer is Mark Brown. <laughs> Mark Brown, the loan officer. Mark dot loans on Instagram. Also, my baby Sky Daddy. All right, our guest just got here. He's all bandaged up. I had to find out through the grapevine that he was bandaged up. We're gonna talk about that today. So I'm gonna read off his bio, and then we're gonna bring him in. Alvin Hope Johnson is the president of Hope Housing Foundation and guides the staff of Assertive Management, LLC. 
Hope's privately owned property management firm, the foundation, which is headquartered in McKinney, Texas, was incorporated as a 501c3 in 1998. Hope has a business model that positions itself as one of the most effective nonprofit affordable workforce housing organizations in the country. With a little over 1,300 affordable housing units and growing, the foundation is the acquisition is in the acquisition stages of acquiring an additional 2,000 units for 2021. Well, I hope he did it. Um, he also planned, well, I'm going to skip this because there's some more stuff about 2021. Um, but he is also the president and CEO of Multifamily Monopoly, an education platform designed to give the serious real estate investor all the tools necessary to develop and acquire their own multifamily apartment building. Before fully investing his time into hope, Alvin was the vice president of operations for American Housing Foundation in Amarillo, Texas, and will hold and will also serve as the interim president for two years. Amarillo-based American Housing Foundation successfully grew from two apartment complexes purchased from a local Catholic organization in 89 to one of the largest affordable housing companies in the country, providing homes to more than 50,000 families and individuals while supporting healthy communities. American Housing Foundation boasted 16,000 units spread across the southern U.S. Alvin's tenure with the AHF helped grow the vision of what Hope Housing Foundation is and will become. Alvin takes pride in being an industry leader in service and building strong relationships with his business partners. Through his faith and determination, Hope Housing Foundation will definitely be a front runner in the affordable housing market. Everyone, welcome Alvin Hope Johnson to the stream. Hey. Hey. Did you have a neck you, brace on a few minutes ago? Was that my vision? Can you hear me? Because I'm in a I had to stop I, in a restaurant in the airport and they're making margaritas. So I'm sorry, but is my volume okay? Your volume's fine. Okay. Yeah, I did so, have on a neck brace. Okay. I thought I was crazy. Okay. Man. How you doing? I heard you were in the hospital. My mom told me that she was on your page. You was in the hospital with the whole yes, schedule and all that good stuff. How you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Uh, so I'll tell you that, man, what God's got for you, <laughs> they, they can't take it. They can't stop it. I'm just so elated to be with y'all tonight. Um, I've had such an epiphany over the last seven, eight, nine days and has grown our vision to to what's going to be even new heights. And I'm just excited to be with y'all tonight, man. Let's Let's talk about it. Awesome. So, okay, let's talk about your epiphany. You said you had an epiphany. Um, yeah. You want to share? Sure. Okay. Well, I'll tell you, I um, back January 28th, 10.30 p.m., I had a car wreck doing 80 miles an hour where a car pulled in front of me doing nothing. And we ran in the back of them doing 80. They had to pull me out of the car. My arms, legs didn't work. I was paralyzed from the neck down. This was January 28th, like, like two months ago. My fiance was able to just climb out on the other side and get out. But when they carried me to the hospital and the doctor saw me the next day, he told me, Alvin, that car wreck saved your life. And I said, okay, well, that's a, that's, that's, that's a good way to look at it. Tell me why. Tell me about it. He said, well, I had some bone spurs on my neck um, that have grown over time that was causing tingling to go down my hands. And, 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 and of course, as most strong black men, that little old tingling didn't bother me. Really, I didn't know how to describe it, so I didn't talk about it. So it just went on for years. So this car wreck was a precursor to what the rest of my life could have been, paraplegic. So uh, I left the hospital after three days in that wreck. I literally walked out and told Doc, okay, Doc, man, I appreciate you. I'll get back with you real soon. You know, all those symptoms you said I should have been having, I hadn't had. Well, a month passed and I started having headaches and I felt my equilibrium off and everything was going down here really quickly. So they rushed me into surgery to take those burns, bone spurs out and to open up my spinal column uh, in my four, five and six vertebrae to give my spinal cord room. Now this is major surgery, right? But I'm just making it like it's nothing. 
So I went in for a day surgery. I was supposed to leave last Thursday. They did surgery on me Wednesday at noon, Thursday at four o'clock. I was bandaged up, ready to go. And I got up out of the bed to go take my final MRI. And something hit me that like my chest had just got cracked open and everything hurt. Like I've never felt a pain like that before. Well, come to find out I had a hematoma that um, that's a blood bleed under the skin that they had to remove Im immediately. And uh, I could have gone home the next day. Well, after that little scare, I wasn't going home until they threw me out of the hospital. But let me tell you what happened in that in that time. So between the Thursday when I should have gone home and Monday, there were horrific tornadoes that tore up parts of Texas, New Orleans, and all across the country. That storm is still moving. Well, what has come about in the last year of our development process, we have started working towards our own structurally insulated panel plant so that we can go build 20,000 units of apartments in five years and not be subject to supply chain disruptions because we will own our own manufacturing plant. In that manufacturing plant, we will employ um, nonviolent offenders from the Texas penal system that can't get jobs and we will train them to be entrepreneurs to build our apartments. Everybody don't want to do that. But uh, some people may want to be a painter. Some people may want to be electrician. Some people may want to have their own framing crew. Some people may want to lay carpet. That's okay. We're going to have a full blown trade school in our facility. So that, that, that part of my dream, that was, um, man, this, we could talk for hours on this book. I'm not going to hold y'all that long, but 30, 25, 30 years ago, that seed was planted in me. And so we're over the last course of the last three years of developing these neighborhoods in Greenville, Texas, and, and starting our new developments, we've got uh, 80, 50, 130. We've got about right now today, $130 million worth of brand new development going on. The largest structurally insulated panel community built in the U.S. We're doing it right now. 200 units of structurally insulated panel high performance buildings. But laying in that hospital bed, watching those storms be ravaged. I've also had a dream of all be, being able to give away houses, shipping them all over the world to people that needed them. Well, laying in that hospital bed, I had an opportunity to see what our immediate future looked like by the end of this year with our plant, that it has literally come from, oh, we're just gonna give away some houses every time a storm hits to where every time we build 20 apartments in our plant, we will build one house to give away. And so anytime storms are ravaged, tornadoes, floods, our little houses, that'll be 600, you know, they put used to put people in those little FEMA trailers. Man, those things were full of formaldehyde and people died in those things. Well, our little SIP panel houses, that'll be 600 square feet, can have a bedroom, a kitchen, and a bathroom, and a small living area. And then if you've got a family that needs a couple of other bedrooms, the other half of it goes together. And now we can drop off literally a three bedroom house uh, with two bathrooms in it and plug it up on a generator and hook it to water in a couple of hours. So for every 20 apartments we build out of our plant, we will be donating one house. So over the course of how many years, 20,000 units, we'll give away a thousand houses in the next five years, just responding to, uh, catastrophes that happen here in the United States. So that epiphany, uh, that that hematoma, this all of this junk that happened to me allowed me to lay there in that bed for four days and just thank God, be ultra grateful for all of the doctors, nurses, and everybody that's come alongside to take care of me. And for my team that believes in me so much that they're willing to help this little old crazy dude with this crazy big old dream they're willing to help me fulfill it. So that's what the epiphany was about. You know, I got out of the hospital two days ago. I'm in Miami. I'm great. I don't have any pain. I have on a neck brace just to, to keep me, to remind me 
that I just had neck surgery. Not because I need it, but just so I don't put myself in a bad compromising situation. So, uh, man, there was a whole lot in what I just said, talking about the dream, the vision, the seeds that were planted, the things that God has done for me, where the vision is going to go, the team. So we can pick up on any of that and talk about it. We might have to do this in two or three segments. <laughs> you always come on and to say talk that. About some apartments, but you know we might need to have chats. <laughs> you always say that, and then when you get here, you realize your schedule is busy. <laughs> be having well, all hey, this man, stuff going I on. I appreciate you being so allowing me to be late. I did not want to miss it. I was thrown off yesterday, somehow or another, between two phones and five email addresses. My calendars got crossed, and. And I'm and last night I was sitting there going, boy, I bet you they're saying, boy, that's a typical black man. He always lay like, on, never show up. But I did everything I could to get here tonight. Thank you for allowing me to be late. I told you it would be worth it. So let's make it worth it for your audience. I appreciate it. So just um everybody, uh Alvin was supposed to come on to our members only mastermind last night and some schedule, some his scheduling got all messed up. And so we were like, you know, I just don't worry about it. We'll we'll have him come on to our um, our Q and A session. It's public, so here we are. Okay, so I know a little bit because we've talked before, but why don't you tell everyone? Um, let's go back and talk about. Well, first of all, let me just say, amen to you being he feeling healthy and pulling through all of that. Um, God is Thank good. You. Amen. We, yes, we have to acknowledge the Lord in all his magnificent ways. So I'm really happy for you. I really, really am. That's, that's an incredible story. Um, so why don't you tell everybody um, how you got here? Like I read off your bio. Why don't you give everybody uh, the detail about how you got here? And I want to tell you one thing that I want to cover because we I know we can get in lost in the weeds in your story because you got so much stuff going on. But the direction I want to go in is I want you to explain the structure of how you use the nonprofit and the profit because you ran it by us before and it was mind blowing. And now I'm at a point where I can actually do it. So I want to. That was the thing that was most memorable about you. So let's talk about how you got to where you are today and then we can talk about how you structure everything. That's the, that's the major game changer of what it is that you do, in my opinion. Okay. And I'm sorry, I'm digging around. I was looking for a charger, but we're going to be good. We're going to make this work. So we use a 501c3 nonprofit literally just as our parent company. That entity had experience when I took over. Was it necessary? Today, I know that it was not. Um, but because it had a resume, I was able to say, hey, man, this entity has been around for 20 years and has been a part of this. And and now I'm the president. And, and realistically, nobody cares what happened 15 years ago. The, the resume of the foundation sounds very impressive. But, you know, it's kind of like, what have you done for us lately? Uh, so we use that nonprofit today as our main umbrella company for anything that's nonprofit. And so what differentiates our nonprofit activities from our for-profit activities, if it is geared towards affordable housing, it is geared towards uh, education, towards Anything charitable that's, you know, we've got bylaws and everything that, that dictates what our organization can do. If it has anything to do with that or those guidelines that fall within that bylaws, then we use that as a as the umbrella company. Now, that sounds so, so tough. Let me, let's break it down really simple. Today, um, I went out and we found... 17 acres of land already entitled for 400 units of apartments. Hope Housing Foundation and our assigns put that thing under contract and we were going to go build 400 units of apartments, 200 at a time. Hope Housing Foundation is the single member or started out as the single member of that entity. And we quickly realized, hey, this is going to be a 
fifty million dollar project for two hundred units, we're gonna need some partners. So let's talk to our attorney. Let's put together a private placement memorandum, um, and let's do a raise with accredited investors. Accredited investor is an investor that has a net worth over a hundred thousand, uh, or I mean over a million dollars, not including their homestead. Or they make two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year as a single person, three hundred thousand a year as a couple. Those numbers, from the income perspective, may have changed just very recently, but let's use that as the premise. So we set out to go raise ten million dollars in equity uh, to build this fifty-three million dollar project, um, all under the nonprofit. It's just it's just a regular entity. The thing that dictates what happens with the money in a nonprofit is what you do with it. None of the earnings, benefits, endearments can go to any single person within that entity. What does that mean? I can go make this a gazillion dollar company, which we will, and I only get a salary. I'm cool with that. Your salary is based on the amount of commerce that you create anyway. So you can go out and start a lawnmower shop and say, hey, man, I own 100% of this thing and I get to bring all the money home. Well, how much you make it? Well, you're making $1,000 a month. Okay, well, good. You turn that thing into a gazillion dollar company like Yazoo or, or John Deere, do you need to bring all the profits home at that point? No, you need some asset protection. You need to make sure so... From a preservation perspective from our properties, the nonprofit is a preserving arm of, of our mission and our brand. Uh, everything that feeds this nonprofit. Okay, we're gonna build these apartments. And we need to hire a developer. We get bids from developers. I'm a developer too. We got a for-profit development company. We take three or four bids, and if I feel as though that our organization, the for-profit entity, can provide a level of service to the nonprofit that is better, at least at best, the same, but probably better, at a better price, then we're going to do it ourselves. So we have literally become a vertically integrated company, and now we're working with our attorneys to bring a lot of the for-profit stuff under the for under the nonprofit umbrella, you know, like multifamily monopoly. It's an education company. Well, our bylaws for Hope Housing Foundation say that we provide education. Well, maybe this one day will be under that nonprofit umbrella. Thank you. And uh, so we're just we're just walking this out and putting some of the smartest people around me that I know to help us fulfill this dream. I was on a plane just now listening to John Maxwell. Uh, we were talking, he was talking about this book, Put Your Dream to the Test. Most of us start out with somebody else's dream. His dream was initially to be a musician, but it wasn't his dream, it was his parents' dream. Then he talked about transitioning from somebody else's dream into his calling. And then that calling is what has led him to mega success and and he started out as a pastor leadership pastor now he's a leadership coach one of the largest in the world just just following that calling but all of that started under a nonprofit umbrella of the church so this business structure is nothing that's different um it's widely used nfl's a nonprofit. for so figure anybody know that I didn't it know is that. a nonprofit. They run commercials and they pay gazillions of dollars in salaries and these owners make all this money. But the organization itself that the teams pay franchise fees to is a nonprofit. So, I don't have opinions about that. But tell me what, but it, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan of the NFL. But tell me, tell me talk, walk us through what the benefits of doing it this way is. Benefits. Well, truly the benefit for us was the mission to provide safe, decent, sanitary housing mm -hmm. to the economically challenged and the workforce communities across America. That was the, so staying true to the mission was the biggest benefit. Other than that, 
I really don't know that there are any other benefits. Uh, in some states, nonprofits don't pay property taxes. So that would allow me to come into Florida, Georgia, Louisiana, uh, build an apartment complex or buy something. And literally, because it's owned by the nonprofit, I could take it off the tax rolls. Does that allow me to be more competitive when I'm bidding on properties or running my numbers? That could be that could be a game changer in some states. But typically in those states where that is allowed, where we don't have to pay property taxes, their property taxes are not like they are in Texas. Our meal rate in Texas, because we don't have state income taxes, like 3.1 per thousand. So you got a hundred thousand dollar house, you're gonna pay thirty one hundred dollars a year in taxes. You got a million dollar house, you're gonna pay thirty one thousand dollars a year in taxes, property taxes. You got a hundred million dollar apartment complex, you're gonna pay three million dollars in property taxes. Owned by a nonprofit, that's pretty significant if you didn't have to pay property tax. So that's one advantage. Other than that advantage, yeah. You asset protection. Again, I'm not getting rich doing that. Uh, I'm getting wealthy doing the work. Right. It's not about the money. So there's some advantages to that. There are probably some disadvantages, too, because, again, I can't say that this is all my money. If that's a disadvantage, it's not to me. But to some people, it may be a hindrance because we typically want to own 100 percent of everything. We want to be the man and. And I, don't, I ain't got no board of directors telling me what to do. I am governed by a board of directors and the whole nine yards. They just happen to share in the vision. So that goes back to team building. That goes back to putting the right people on the bus. Uh, why would you put somebody, if you start your own organization, why would you put somebody on your board that is not going to support your vision? Right. Now, I understand if I get off the rails and do some crazy stuff, then I have charged them with the responsibility of sitting me down. Because if I'm going to run this thing off the rails, that's not why I'm here. Right. You know, so um, we have quarterly meetings and we had some really, really dynamic meetings between January 30th and just last week. You know, I had to do a, another living will. I had an opportunity to do another living will. Um. Oh, his what? Ah. Hey, hey, hey! Sorry about that. I hope I um. Oh shit! Shoot! <laughs> shoot! 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 He didn't say. Can you hear me? All right. Yeah. He. Uh. I think his laptop died. So hopefully he comes back in. Um. So I wanted to talk about that because he's doing major deals. And I think a lot of times he's coming a lot of times when we are trying to level up, our biggest issue is how to structure everything. So I wanted to get right down to it to talk about the structure. So here he is. I'm going to bring him back in everyone. There you go. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, I can't hear you. Let me see if I can fix that. Testing, These people testing. know I don't land it and they know I got stuff to do and they always want to call me. So I'm sorry about that. It's all um, right. So we were talking about advantages, disadvantages. I can't mm -hmm. remember where I left off. Um, so you were you were talking about the board, um, that you have a board of directors that you answer to. Something's you hear me? going on. I can't hear you. Testing, testing. Am I muted? No, I'm not muted. Hello, hello. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Okay, hopefully I can hear you now. Turn the volume up a little bit. Can you hear me? Testing, testing. I cannot. Oh my God. This is. I'm going to owe you and your mother a big dinner some flowers and uh and some more time let me see <laughs> if i can get on on my other phone to make this work because this is ridiculous i'm so right. sorry i'm gonna put him in the uh 
Let me. Okay, so he says he's gonna call back. All right, so that's what I wanted to talk about. Um, the reason I'm asking is because of the structure, and I think that's the thing that gets us, keeps us from going, doing that next thing on the next level, is just how to structure and set it up. Um, don't, guys, don't forget you can ask questions as well. Post your questions in the chat. So when he comes back, I'll ask questions because otherwise I'll just dominate this whole thing. <laughs> I'll just dominate the whole interview. Um, and if y'all cool with that, I can do that as well. Um, so post your questions in the chat too, right? Um, how do y'all feel about having 100% control over your assets or doing large deals, multiple thousands of units, but yet you answer to a board. You have a job. You created another job. How do y'all feel about that? Which one would you do? Which one would you do? Let me know in the chat. Would you say, okay, you know what? I'm going to stick with smaller deals and I'm now my own boss or am I willing to do larger deals and I have a lot of control but I don't have ultimate control and then the other question I was curious about was like essentially at the end of the day this isn't his personal net worth like how can he pass this down that was my next question so, um, Mike said, I'll do the large. You would, you would take another job, a bigger job. Um, favor said no job. Cam said, depends on your calling true that. Cause he definitely has a passion for what it is that he's doing. DF says, stick with the smaller deal so I can maintain control. Keith said, nope. So I'm assuming that meant you want the smaller deals. Keith, <laughs> he just, he just, he just said, the answer is no. I said, A or B. He said, the answer is no. <laughs> All right. So Alvin's back. Um, all right, here you go. All right. Back. You hear me? Man, both of my phones were going dead. I'm like, I'm sorry. I just wasn't prepared. It's all, right. It's uh, all right. Can you hear it's me? Okay. Though? I'm getting back on my game. Good. Can you hear so me? So we were talking about uh, advantages, disadvantages. I don't, I never really looked at the nonprofit as a tool for an advantage. Because I just felt like that's what I was supposed to be doing. And when you know that's what you're supposed to, it's like saying, what's the advantage of going to church? I don't know I'm supposed to be doing that. That's my relationship. So I think, you know, I treat this organization the same way. I don't, you know, there's some inherent advan uh, advantages, but I would not talk to somebody about starting an organization like this based on advantages of real estate. That's not, that's not the intent. It's funny because, um, you know, I have my, my membership and people always ask me questions like the one I just asked you. And I say, listen, I don't do this. Like I do this because this is my purpose. Right. <laughs> so don't right. do this because you're trying to make a whole bunch of money. <laughs> I do this because this is my purpose. <laughs> and and the money job. is a byproduct. Like, it's a real right? thing. And yes, just, exactly. It just comes because you're doing what you're supposed to do. Exactly. Exactly. So, Talk all right, I, I, I have another question. Um, okay. We were talking about this when um, your phone was out. The way that you have it structured, and I'm only saying this because one of our um, core values is all about building wealth for your children's children. But because everything is in the nonprofit and you have a board, technically the the apartment building don't go towards your, your, your net worth or you can't leave it to your kids and your children's children. How does that work? Now you said those apartments add towards my network, or your, or just something to leave. Will you be able to leave ownership or anything to your kids or your kids' kids? How does it work, and how? What's the way around it? Or are you yeah. one of those people that don't think they should leave anything to their kids? Because that's a whole thing with the Uber rich. It is a whole thing, right? Yes. <laughs> Well, today my son is 36 years old. I've got two beautiful granddaughters that are nine and five. I know right now I have already given my son everything he needs to succeed. I've given that to him. That's by DNA. 
Anything else he gets, he earns. I'm not going to leave him no hundreds of millions and billions of dollars. Not. Now, one thing I have had the pleasure of doing within the last 30 days is bringing my son to work in our organization. It has been my desire that he would want to follow in my footsteps. I have not always had a life that was worth following. And so at 30, you know, now he's 36, he has gone out, gone to college, um, made his own road in life, his own family. And now he has come to a realization that I want to get a real estate. I want to start developing some apartments or some duplexes and et cetera. And so now at this point, I feel it a responsibility because we've got a place for him to bring him into the fall and not sit him out there with all those other vultures that could, well, he could lose his shirt. And I don't have the bandwidth to sit him under my tutelage and me go help him do what he wants to do yet. So I bring him into the fall where we've got 20 people on this team and let him be a project manager. He's an engineer by schooling. So smart kid. And uh, I will make enough money from my salary and from my ancillary activities uh, to where one day I won't have to pay a life insurance policy and they will have enough proceeds in all of these other ancillary businesses to surely be okay. And if he chooses to stay on at Hope Housing Foundation after I'm long gone, um, that's up to him and the board. My board knows my desire for him to do that, but it also is up to him, right? He has to fulfill that, he's gotta walk it out. So anybody that wants to just go out and leave their kids a whole bunch of money, you probably ain't been enough a whole bunch of money. You think helping your kids that way is gonna get them a head start. I beg to differ. We can have a whole conversation. We can have a whole debate about that. But I'm, I see, I see both sides of it. I really do because a lot of times when people leave wealth, paper wealth to their kids, they don't leave the thing that made them the wealth to their kids, which is those hard times. Really, you know. So I, I know both sides, but I'm, I'm on the side of leaving the inheritance. Let me touch on that for one second. Mm -hmm. And the, the sad part is most of the time we think we're doing something for our families or, or our loved ones. And, and we're doing it half-hearted or we're not doing it to the best of our ability. So, so many times people have gotten called home before they had an opportunity to get everything in order. Yeah. Everything's not always in order. And they wind up leaving their kids and their family a big old tangled pile of mess, junk that these people wish they'd have never had. Oh, this property could be worth something. Yeah, it's over here in the freaking, where is it? Ten buck two? Yeah, there are some, there, that's not absolutes. There are some, you know, some, some different scenarios to that. But not, eight out of ten times, it's done not to the best that it could have been done because we didn't put the right people on our team to set it up right in the first place. We leave our families tax problems uh, and all kind of other issues that go along with uh, not having prior planning done the right way. That's a whole nother conversation. But I, That's again, I, 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 I do respect your, your point of view because it's the thing, like, you know, Warren Buffett's not leaving his, like, they might have a small trust or something, but he's not... He's not giving them anything. <laughs> you know, there, there are other uh, mechanisms that I have not had the, um, I, I hear about trust. I hear That's about those kind of things. Those are, those are great vehicles. Use the right way. So, you know, so this is what I'm, this is what I'm doing with my trust for my okay. son. So I have a, um, I have a 19 month old. This is what I'm doing for my trust. So all my properties. Thank you. <laughs> All my properties, everything is going into the trust and um, there's going to be executors over the trust. And so he won't be able to have control over the trust. Like he'll be able to get a stipend up until he's 30, 35 and or he gets a master's degree or he takes his earnings from the, the trust and amasses half of the value of the trust on his own. 
then either one of those three things will allow him to have control over the assets of the trust. You turn 35, you either get your master's or PhD, or you amass half of the value of the trust on your own. Then you can have it. That's really cool. A trust work. So your 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 son won't pay any any um, probate tax, estate tax, much like a nonprofit, except the trust is governed by same thing. Um, a trustee. Hopefully that trustee has a governing board so that they don't go rogue. We didn't all heard about Steve Harvey's EYL deal. You know, well, his accountants and everybody stole so much money from him, right? So fortunately, he has just kept his head down long enough to come out on the other side of that. So many people don't. So a car is a great tool. Use the right way. It just doesn't work as a boat. <laughs> right? So that trust is, is, again, can be a really, really great tool. Use the right way with the right guidance and, and prior planning. I'm here for it. So, all right, I'm going to tell everybody here. I want them guys to post your, your questions. Okay, and if you don't okay. mind. No, go do your thing. Um, yeah, I've been with you about 30 minutes, mm -hmm. 35 minutes, off and on. I really, really want to do this again. I'll be in my office next week. Uh, so if you want to do this on Wednesday night with your, with your executive team or like we were supposed to do last night, uh, I'll be in a much better environment. I'll be where um it'll look professional as you look okay but i did so, not want to i was not going to let this moment pass without you know without getting with you this evening and man i think that epiphany i had in the hospital has just changed my life it literally has i haven't even processed all that's going to come from that and so i know that when we get to a place where i can hear you better see you better see you more clearly you'll probably have a whole list of questions for me next week that if we want to break it up into recorded segments of 30 minutes at a time or an hour hour and a half I'm okay I, I i really love what you're doing for for your community and uh it needs to be more of it thank you so much listen i'm gonna have alaya you know you've talked to alaya she's gonna reach out to you and schedule everything okay and, um travel safely okay I will thank you so much. Again, I'm sorry for, for all my travels, all my junk, but uh, I'm not sorry. I apologize that my schedule got jacked up. That's a better way of saying that. Uh, okay. Everything happens for a reason. And uh, thank and I you. get to see you again. Same here. Thank all you right. so much. All right. Have a good night. You too. Okay, bye-bye. All right, everyone. I feel like um, we got some things accomplished here. Alvin's a busy guy. <laughs> we had some flubs with the scheduling, but it's all good. Kane said, this was great. Thank you. I appreciate it, y'all. Y'all know I try to make sure I bring y'all as much value, especially since y'all um, y'all be coming out here and, and y'all could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. I really appreciate it. And um, ooh. It. and um y'all know we're going to be here um next time you know what before we go guys if y'all have any qu questions or comments or anything that y'all want to post in the chat that i could address i'm here um i'll keep this going for just another few more minutes um but otherwise y'all know we're here every thursday at 7 p.m and please don't forget we are doubling the price of the better than success real estate league on monday so if you want to join, join right now and then you lock in forever at the current rate versus it's it's $97 per month now, it'll be $197 on Monday. And I have some major announcements that I'm going to be making literally throughout the this rest of this year is planned, like major, major, major things. But um, thank you so much. Um, uh, Michael said he really appears to be genuinely good person. Yeah, he does. I I I really got that. He was like <laughs> Listen, I just want to help people and I don't even care if I got a job, if I don't got a job, if I'm on the board, I'm not on the board. I don't care. I want to help people. Um, yeah, the epiphany was amazing. Um, thank you guys. 
Um, I appreciate you all coming out. Oh, let me post the link to the Better Than Success Real Estate League. Um, members, make sure y'all tell y'all friends that like, if they don't get in, they ain't going to be in. You know what I'm saying? Post that, uh, take that link and sign up. And if you, when you sign up, someone will call you tomorrow to get you all acclimated up in the group. And um, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you guys. I'm just gonna post Dallas says he truly appreciate the desire to help everyone. I'm assuming that was for him. Um, also, I <laughs> y'all know how I feel about helping people too. It could be for me too. <laughs> but I love y'all. Make sure y'all have a great night and subscribe to this channel wherever you are. Subscribe to this platform. Until next time, I love y'all. Have a great night.